Welcome back everybody, I'll be your Sim CFI and today we're going to cover your high performance and complex airplane checkout. A high performance airplane is one that has an engine of 200 horsepower or more, and a complex airplane is one that has a constant speed propeller, retractable landing gear, and wing flaps. And a float plane complex will have the variable, the constant speed propeller, and wing flaps. And so in the United States, to be able to fly an airplane that's high performance and or complex, you just have to get an endorsement. It's not a certificate or a rating that requires a check ride. And so an endorsement is just going is doing ground and flight instruction with a flight instructor until he deems that you're competent enough to fly the airplane. And then he sends you a logbook and it's a one time endorsement for life and you're good to go. And so now before we get flying, I've already done the pre flight. And this is a normal pre-flight for any Piper single engine airplane for the most part, similar to the Cherokee. Few notable exceptions. This one's got a pitot tube, a regular pitot tube that you see on a Cessna. So it's just a pitot tube, the static port is not here. Static port in this airplane is up here on the top left corner of the H, right over here. You can see the four little dots that outline the circle. And then in the real world at least, with retract retractable gear, you usually want to get under here and, and look at the inner workings of the gear to make sure it's going to work properly. And then another thing to note, this plane has an electric gear system where a lot of complex airplanes will have a hydraulic system and so there'll be hydraulic lines down there and you want to check those too. So now getting into the airplane, the next difference is you're going to see, we'll, we'll take down this control lock and this yoke, next difference is you're going to see is that we have manifold pressure and RPM and manifold pressure is the new one and these are your power gauges and they've been separated and so RPM is the speed of the engine and since it's geared to the it's directly connected to the propeller it's also the propeller speed and the manifold pressure is a new instrument that you see now and it it's measuring the suction really of the engine it's measuring how much it's measuring the suction that the engine is creating and so it's and what it's displaying though is is inches of mercury which is the same as your ambient air pressure and that's because when you when you move the throttle when you move the throttle in and out that's going to move the throttle plate right here and that governs how much air comes into the engine and so getting into this manifold pressure discussion, when the engine is not running, you'll see that with the throttle, that this is throttle fully open, but it doesn't matter fully open or closed as there's enough of, uh, there's enough of a gap when it's closed for the air to balance out anyways. And so the manifold pressure is right over here and it's measuring, it's gonna be about the same as your outside air pressure when the engine is not running. And so we look at the sim, and you can see that this is a standard day I have loaded up, just clear weather. So it's 2992, which is very close to 30. And so that's your manifold pressure needs. You can see it doesn't matter if it's open or closed. Now, when the engine does start, engine running, throttle closed, you can see there's a little bit of a gap. That's where the air gets through. But now you have the pistons running. And when the pistons are going up and down, any time the piston goes down, it opens the intake valve and it's sucking in air. And so this, this is the concept that your engine is an air pump. And so it's sucking in air. And so when your throttle plate is closed like this, it's restricting the majority of the air that can go through. And the engine is literally gasping for air when it's idling. It's just getting just a little bit. And so it's measuring a vacuum down here, and that's why the manifold pressure goes down to about 12 inches when it's idle. And then when you open up that throttle, your manifold pressure goes all the way to essentially the outside air pressure when it's fully open, because now the engine can freely suck in all the air that it needs. And then another thing what we'll discuss later when we start flying is when you move when you move the RPM lever the, the prop lever and you change the RPM you'll see the manifold go up or down 
and that's that's because a different different amounts of air are being sucked in by the engine when when the pistons are going up and down faster it's sucking more air and when the pistons are going up and down slower at a lower rpm it's sucking in less air and when it's sucking less air you're going to see a higher manifold pressure because it's measuring the difference between inside and outside it's measuring the vacuum so when it's sucking less air it's going to be more neutralized and you see a slight rpm rise when you pull the rpm back and when you push the rpm forward the proper lever forward you're going to see a manifold pressure decrease because now it's increasing that vacuum power so that's a little intro on the manifold pressure and this is an article on AvWeb by John Deacon. If you just go to Google and type manifold pressure sucks, it should be the very first result. And you can see this article. And it's got a whole bunch of other engine related columns that are very interesting to read. And then while we're out here talking about the constant speed propeller, you can go to bold method, just Google, just Google bold method constant speed propeller and you'll get this article and it explains very well how your prop lever works and what's happening is that you move the lever and it changes a spring tension and that spring tension changes fly weights and that governs when to move oil in and out of this hub and the hub is the oil in the hub is going to push this it's going to push this part back and it's going to increase or decrease the pitch of the blade to maintain a constant RPM and the fly weights move in and out to to by themselves based off oil pressure and the speed at which they're moving to change it and you can read more about that in here but that's a basic overview and then flight sim 41 has a really good YouTube video pretty lengthy very detailed on how constant speed props work as well so you can check all these out just by googling these different things Okay, so into the sim now, we have an understanding of manifold pressure is really a vacuum, but it's measuring the atmospheric pressure inside your intake manifold, and RPM, what, what you read on here, is what you're controlling with the prop lever. Most airplanes, this would be painted blue, a blue colored lever, this would be black, and this is red. This one just so happens to be black, but it's the prop control. And so that's that's the main differences between flying your fixed pitch propeller 172 or Cherokee versus having a constant speed propeller on this Comanche, where now you have RPM and manifold pressure. So let's go ahead and get the airplane started. And then just look at this manifold pressure. It's at full. We'll go through our checklist real quick. So we've we've done most of these things. We did the pre-flight engine starting, throttle cracked, mixture rich, prop full, master switch on, check gear lights green, you want to make sure it's showing positive gear down, fuel pump on and check pressure then off, this is just like the Cherokee. So here's our fuel pressure, turn fuel pump on, has that same weird sounding Piper fuel pump, pressure gets into the green. Stabilizes up there, that's good. Turn it off. Okay, engine prime. I'll do two shots of primer. Okay, mags to both and starter. And we'll check our engine instruments and turn the avionics on. This is just like the Cherokee where the ignition is separate from the starter. So we'd open up the little window here, shout clear prop, and then we'll go ahead and get it started. We got our parking brake set and you see that manifold pressure goes down because now the engine is acting as a vacuum pump an air pump and that throttle is mostly out so that throttle plate is mostly restricting the airflow and that's why we see a low manifold pressure because the pressure to the right of that throttle that you saw in the picture is a lot lower the engine is sucking air through and it's creating a vacuum all right. So we have temperature. Temperature's in the green because I, I just ran this earlier. We have oil pressure in the green, which is good. Positive charge. Good fuel pressure. We have fuel in both tanks. I just filled them up. And CHT, cylinder head temperature, will rise. And this is also somewhat of a new gauge you see with, with larger engines. You start getting better instrumentation. And so cylinder head temperature 
is really your best gauge for uh, cylinder pressures and stresses. And so if, if the cylinder head temperature is high, then the cylinders are, are working pretty hard or they're under a large pressure. And so you want them, you usually want cylinder head temperatures to be around 380. They give really high maximums. This Lycoming engine has a red line of 500. And you, you never, you don't even want to get up to 425. Your real max you want to be is 400. And you want to aim to be around 380, which is right around the middle here, I think. It's, it's obviously not well marked, but it's about the middle for 380 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so we'll lean the mixture. We've got about halfway. A little bit loss of RPM, that's a good thing. And oh, the beacon was done. Make sure you turn the beacon on when starting. Avionics goes on. The radios come on. Alright, taxi radios on, transponder ALT, heading indicator set. Uh, it's calm wind, we'll just go with runway 32 today. Set that right down there. And I've already set the heading and the altimeter. Heading and altimeter set, heading indicator, landing gear indicator green. Radio, ADAS, we've already listened to it. Parking brake, release, brakes test on roll. And just a real quick thing about these radios up here. It's, this is similar to the Cessna where you have COM1, COM2, both. This is what you're choosing to listen to when you click these things. Um, and so right now it's COM1. COM2 is where the AWOS is, so you can do just COM2, but then you won't hear anything that comes over this one. So in the real world, we'll select both when it's available, because then if we want to hear ground or tower or the common traffic frequency, if you've got a non-towered airport like this, you can hear that as well. This slides a quick note on that. So now for the run-up, that's when we actually get there, so we'll do our taxi. Taxing this airplane is no different than taxing any other airplane. So we're going to go ahead and, and skip the video until we get to the run-up area. Alright, so now we're at the run-up area. Hold the Shift 2 menu. Run-up, brakes hold, fuel quantity check. We got full and full fuel selectors, desired tank. So let's do the right tank for now. And, and in this airplane, you can do both main tanks feeding. Some advise to do just one at a time to avoid running a tank dry without really knowing it. So either one works. Um, and so for the video, I'll just show doing this. Also, when you have tip tanks like I do, you got off, left tip, left main. And so you want to take off with main tanks. But once you get in the air and in cruise, you can go down to your you can go down to your tip tanks and operate like that. And there's, they got a gauge for that down here too. Your, this is the set for the left tip tank, and that's the right tip tank. And then these are the fuel ga fuel gauges for your main tanks. All right, mixture set. So we'll do rich now. Throttle 2000. We've got our parking brake on. We're gonna do essentially the same. The same run up that you do in the Cherokee. Carbureted engines, we also have the carburetor heat to check. So we'll check oil temperature, pressure, suction, ammeter, and fuel quantity, fuel pressure, CHT is about in the green, EGT is not you know, in a weird position. It's right around the middle, that's good. So now we'll do mag check. Right mag, 100 RPM drop, back to both goes back to 2000, left mag, 100 RPM drop, goes back to both, and you can see with between left mag and right mag there's no variation, so that's good, because you can only have a 50 RPM difference between the two and a 100 RPM drop total from either one of them. And then we'll do the carb heat check, just looking for a general reduction and then back up. So the next thing on the next thing that we would do, I did a little out of order, so we do this last, but you do a prop cycle, and this is testing that governor system. So right now we have the prop all the way full, 
which is demanding the governor to give us the, the 2600 RPM or so, whatever the exact maximum is. And so it obviously can't get to that right now because we're not going fast enough to move it there. But if you start bringing the prop lever back, see it's still not doing anything because now it's probably demanding around 22 or so. Because what you're doing is you're selecting an RPM for the governor to try to obtain. And so I'm moving out slowly to show you how that works. You can see now it's moving back. But when you do this more realistically, it's, it's just going to be one big sweep. So you bring it down, and you can see the drop. And so we're looking for a drop, a rise in manifold pressure because of the less vacuum this is pulling. The lower RPM the pistons are moving slower, it's going to suck less air, makes less of a vacuum, manifold pressure goes up, so drop, rise, and then oil pressure will drop because oil has to be moved to the hub to make the prop change pitch to try to maintain that lower RPM. So drop, rise, drop. So drop, rise, and then there's a drop when it initially did it. It'll stabilize once it gets to its new position. So now that we've seen those two, just look at the oil pressure, and you can see the drop. And then realistically, you only have to move this prop back once or twice. Um, there's, there's holes up there that constantly bring new oil to it. And so even with cold oil, it's going to get replaced. The cold oil that's sitting in the hub, it's going to get replaced with new warmer oil very soon. And you cycle it once, all the way back and forward, it's going to get its new oil. On, on large radial engines, they had to do it a lot more because the system was more complicated and there's just more oil to work with. And so some of those habits came over and people will tend to do this, you know, three or more times and it's not necessarily required. So now we'll bring our RPM back to idle. And I'll usually bring it to the idle stop to make sure it actually idles. Bring it to a thousand. Lay the mixture real quick. Okay, before takeoff, controls free and correct. So you go back, forward, left, right, and you can look outside the verify. So right aileron is up when I'm pointing to the right. Left aileron is up when I'm pointing to the left. Elevator goes up when I pull back. Elevator goes down when I push forward. And the nose wheel is directly directly connected to the rudders. But sometimes it's good to check rudder and all your controls like this, just for the sake of making sure your physical controls work too. All right, fuel select is desired tank. So now we've been running on the right. Let's switch to the left tank for takeoff. Fuel pump on. Carb heat is off. Mixture is rich. Propeller set, that's going to be full because we want maximum power for takeoff. Engine gauges check, so making sure your oil temp and cylinder head temp are in the green. Trim tab neutral. There it is. Flap set, we're going to do zero flaps for a takeoff in this airplane, for a normal takeoff. And then just, just for a technical note, there's three positions. You have nine. 18 degrees and 27 degrees for those who want to know the degree settings. Okay, door latched. Typical Piper door. This opens and closes it and this latches it. That's locked. And I'll take off throttle full. Rotate around 85. Positive rate of climb. Gear up. Flaps up. Check. They're, they'll already be up. We'll climb out at VY at least initially and then we'll accelerate to a little faster speed for cooling and visibility. And you always, anytime you're flying, you always want to be looking for a safe landing area. Now this is the part that we're going to deviate from, and it's legal. Fuel pump at a thousand feet, um, yeah, fuel pump at a thousand feet, AGL yeah, will turn off, and then we'll check the pressure right here to make sure the engine driven pump is working. And then we're going to maintain full power, full throttle, which is the manifold pressure part, but we will reduce the, th the RPM about the 2400 that should work because that's really for noise we're going to do that but we want to keep full throttle 
because of an extra enriching feature that you have when you have full throttle. When you pull the throttle back to get 24 inches, you're losing that extra enriching and cooling, and your CHTs, your cylinder head temperatures, are going to go up a lot more than if you don't do it, and that's just bad for the engine. And you're going to climb faster at full throttle as well, so you're also going to get to your cruising altitude faster, and in cruise is where you really have good engine cooling, so it's better to just keep the throttle full and especially once you start climbing above four or five thousand feet in a normally aspirated engine, non-turboed, you're going to be full throttle after that anyway, so you might as well just leave it there. Alright, so speed, best rate, we'll do best rate initially to get off the ground and, and just get a safe distance off the ground, so if we have an engine failure we can get down, we have more altitude to play with, but as we get going, well, we'll probably choose to go with the 120. It'll be better for the engine cooling, and it's better for visibility as well over the nose. And then always make sure your cylinder head temperature is not getting above 400 or 380. And then we'll start leaning over 5,000 if your temperatures allow. And now another thing to note up here. And I'm gonna. I've already covered it in my leaning video, but I'll make. A, I'm gonna make one more to make some final recommendations. It says mixture zero to 50 degrees rich of peak, and we already discussed why 50 degrees rich of peak is the worst area for the engine. It's the hottest for the cylinder head temperatures. Um, and then if you're gonna do if you're gonna do peak EGT, you're gonna want to be at a lower power setting. But we'll discuss that in another video. So I just wanted to point that out. Remember climb. Just do full power. So now we'll taxi to the runway. And for a complex airplane, when you have a retractable gear, you're going to want to tap the brakes after you lift off to stop the wheels turning before we, you retract them. And that's really a good habit more when you're getting, if you have any contamination like snow or slush, you don't want that stuff spinning around inside your wheel well. So before we get to the runway, we'll do our last little flow of, of of stuff to make sure we didn't forget anything. So lights, so we got strobe light. I just turned the landing lights on. It's landing lights are not mandatory for VFR, but it's it's good for visibility. You can see landing lights and you can see strobe lights in the daytime. So light, so lights, camera, action, movable parts, mixtures rich, flaps set, prop full, carpet off, trim set. There's your movable parts that can really affect you in flight and takeoff. Okay, make sure final is clear. The other way of the runway is no one's coming down at you. We're going to stay in the pattern for this one so you can also see the power settings and speeds I use for the pattern, because this can be a very fast and slick airplane. Alright, so we've lined up. We're on the we're on the proper heading. That means we're taking the right run, runway that we want. That's why we always have the heading bug there for runway incursion avoidance. Now when we apply power, we're going to check our instruments to make sure we're actually getting what we want. we got to make sure we get our full RPM, maximum RPM. We have to make sure we get close to the ambient air pressure at full throttle. You want to make sure your oil temperature is in the green and you want to make sure you have oil pressure. Now the RPM goes up and then down a little bit because the, the governor has to try and catch up but now it's stabilized. We got full power and we're just shy of our 29 inches rotating. Okay, we're off the ground, positive right, tap the gear, gear up. Let's pitch for VY. And now another thing to note is that the manifold pressure is slightly lower than it was with the engine off. That's because there's res air resistance through the air filter and the throttle plate. Even though it's all the way open, it's still physically there. 
as you can see, it's a very high pitch angle to get to VY. That's why some pilots will like to do a lower pitch angle. So now to stay in the pattern, we're going to level off at 1,100 feet. And we're going to have to reduce the throttle to about, to about 17 inches. And now we'll start turning. You can turn at 800 feet, but I, I decided to take off and go straight to 1,100 to make it a little bit easier to follow along. So you can turn at 800, which is 300 feet below pattern altitude. So now we reduce to 1,700, and then for noise, we'll bring the RPM down to about 2,000. You can see we're, even with this lower power setting, we have a fast airspeed. And you also saw that we set manifold pressure for 17, and now it's up to like 18 point something. And that's because the RPM has been lowered, the cylinders are going slower, less air is being pulled through, so there's less of a vacuum. So now we're going to reduce that throttle again to 17. We'll get our altitude back. And as you also saw me do, I did one sweeping turn from takeoff to downwind. With these higher performing airplanes, you're going to be going faster. And if you don't make a full sweeping turn like that, you're going to get really far away in downwind. And you don't, you don't want to be too far away in downwind. Just make sure you make, in a real world, make proper radio calls saying that you're turning. You're turning crosswind to downwind, turning base to final. So now, we're coming up on the point where we're going to start slowing down again. You always want to check the manual for the speeds. And in this airplane, you want to, you want to move your VLO, is your, gear, is your landing gear operating speed at, at a maximum. And that's the speed at which, at, that's the fastest speed at which you can move the gear up and down. There's another speed, VLE, which is landing gear extended speed. And that's a speed you can just physically have it down. And that's placarded right here. Max gear down speed 150. But we'll move it at or below 125, which is also the top of the white arc. So this makes sure you're in the top of the white arc before you start moving gear and flaps. And so those two new speeds, the VLE and VLO, are unique to complex as well because of the landing gear. Now we're also in the pattern, and so we didn't have very much time to get the fuel pump off before we have to turn it back on. When, when we're not busy instructing, you'll, you'll want to try to turn that off when you can around 800 feet or so, check pressure, and then come back around and turn it back on to try and cool it off a bit. Because as we discussed with the Cherokee, the fuel pump can get hot. All right, so we'll unpause. We're coming up here, so now we're gonna put gear down. And if you notice with that switch, it's a three position switch. You got down, off, and up. So if it's if it's if it's up after you took off and you didn't hit G or your gear switch again, it's gonna stay in the up position. When you want to put gear down, you gotta hit G or your gear switch button twice to move it from to off to down. So gear's going down. Okay to click down we got a green light and now we're going to do gump which is gas on the right tank undercarriage is gear down mixture full rich or whatever is appropriate for your altitude if you go into a high altitude airport you're not going to go all the way to full rich and then p is propeller so for landing for go around sake you're going to want the propeller in the full full fine position which is all the way forward because if you shove throttle in, you want to make sure you have the RPM to be able to do that and the mixture as well. And that's the last thing I'll set as propeller after we slow down a little bit. Because if you push the propeller in when we're a little bit faster, it's going to rev up the RPM and make it louder for outside. And we, we bring the RPM back out here because all these people that live next to the airport are going to want to close the airport down if you're just screaming around the pattern at full RPM. So so our downwind before landing check is gump, G-U-M-P, gas, undercarriage, mixture, prop. And then sometimes we add S for seat belts as well in the real world. So gear down, gas, undercarriage, mixture, 
I'll save the prop for a second. We're going to reduce to 14 inches and the first notch of flaps for our descent. We're going to slow down a little bit. So now we'll descend about 100 miles an hour. We're getting around our 45 degree point. We're going to turn. Now the notch of flaps are slower. I'll push the prop in. And if you're not comfortable with holding the prop off like that, just go ahead and throw it in the beam of the numbers. But just at least do it after you reduce the throttle to save the noise. So now the gum checklist before the landing checklist is complete. We'll check gear down again. And now we'll turn final with full flaps. And in this airplane, you want to be approaching the runway at about 90 miles an hour. Now I'm trimming. Now we're going to add power because we're getting we're going to get low on the glide slope if we if we keep pitching the maintain 90. All right, so that was a little much. We'll come back off. Runway's made. We're already over it. Reduce the power to idle and land like normal. Just keep holding it off and holding it off, looking all the way down the runway. go, it landed on the mains, come down in the nose gently, we'll add a little bit of brake, pull the yoke back to ease the nose, ease the pressure off the nose wheel, and we'll taxi off. And I'm just going to pull aside right here real quick, simulating that we left the runway taxing back for parking, otherwise you just do a go around if that's what you're doing. So you usually don't want to touch anything unless it's a short field where you got to get the flaps up to get braking effectiveness to stop. So now that we're taxied off, we got the RPM to a thousand, we'll lean the mixture, we'll clean up the airplane. So fuel pump off, you would turn your landing lights off, and your strobe light off, and then we'll put the flaps up. And this is when you taxi back. So now I'm going to taxi back for takeoff, and I'm going to show you uh, a more realistic departure where we're not staying in the pattern, and I'll show you the RPM pullback, and then we'll close the video there. Alright, so we're back at the end of the runway. We'll get everything set up for takeoff again. Turn the pump back on, lights back on. Basically, do lights, camera, action again. So we got lights, camera, action. Move the mixture up. Prop is up. Flaps are zero. Trim is not set. That's why we do that. Check. Trim set. A uh, couple other, other notes. If you have the time, if you're not in a rush, it's always a good idea to use the whole runway. To taxi all the way to the end here to the numbers. Take off from here. It's it's perfectly legal to take an intersection takeoff as long as you know you have the runway available to do it, um, but if you have an engine failure, you just have less runway to play with. In a 6,000 foot runway, if we have an engine failure at like 100 feet or so, we could probably still land on the runway with the gear down. So little thoughts of, like that. Alright, so now we're going to demonstrate a more realistic takeoff that we're not going to return to the pattern with. Take off at full power, and then we're going to reduce the RPM for noise. And you could also do that during the pattern. I just didn't do it last time, we got busy talking with instructing and all that, but make sure you turn off your fuel pump and reduce RPM when able. Okay, so we're going to full power, nice and smoothly, not jamming it up. So now we check manifold pressures in the right spot, oil temperature pressure look okay, airspeed is alive. Here comes 85, we're going to rotate. Positive rate of climb. Tap the brakes. Gear up. Pitch for VY. Get above the ground nice and quickly. Just know that at this high pitch angle with these high performing airplanes, if you have an engine failure, you gotta shove the yoke forward to, to get flying speed where you're gonna stall very quickly. 
so we'll get this RPM back for noise. There's a lot of there's a lot of people that might flinch at moving RPM back before throttle, all because of that keeping more RPM in throttle. But at the same time, we already have more throttle than RPM already, and so that really doesn't mean anything again. We're just we're keeping full throttle. We're keeping full throttle for the cooling and reduced RPM, just a little bit for noise. This is about where it's going to stay. Okay, so now we're going to turn off the fuel pump, check the pressure, pressure's holding, and you can see I've, I've pitched down a little bit, we'll go up to about 120, but the idea is just pitch down a bit after you get a safe altitude above the ground, and you get better visibility, it's easier to handle an engine failure, and it's a little bit better on the cooling. Now we don't have to worry about inching the throttle forward every thousand feet because if if you do have the throttle back one thing to know is that you're going to lose an inch of manifold pressure for every thousand feet and so even with full throttle it's good to know that just you know what's going on going on with your manifold pressure gauge now that's all there really is to talk about right now for flying complex engine There'll be a little more details when it comes to being in cruise and whatnot. We can go over that some of that right now, actually. Let's pause and we'll pull up the Comanche manual. And on page 69, we'll go over performance charts in a later video. But this is kind of where you choose what power setting you're going to want, or at least it's a good guide to start with power settings. And it gives you, gives you leaning instructions. And so you choose, you pick what altitude you're at and you choose what percent power you want to be at. So let's say we want to be 65% power. We're at 5,000 feet. And you usually want to cho choose the lowest RPM and the highest manifold pressure that you can. The lowest RPM is just going to save you fuel and it's going to, it's going to be better for the engine because it's physically moving less. So it's saving the parts. And so let's choose 2100 RPM, at least off the chart at 5,000 that was about 23 inches and so let's just show you how we do that or I guess more realistically we, we can do 3,000 since we're there so let's do 2100 RPM and 23 and a half essentially inches of manifold so we'll level off here so now this is where the more general rule is move the, R, move the throttle back before the RPM because if you move the RPM back when we're moving it over a larger range like this, if you have a much lower RPM for a manifold pressure setting, it's going to start over torquing it. Because your real power is determined by how much torque is being developed. And torque is a combination of your manifold pressure and RPM. And that's just something, that's a gauge we just don't have in this airplane. So we're going to move the throttle back to. 23. And actually, if, if we put the concept to use, when we reduce the RPM, we're going to get a higher manifold pressure. So let's preempt that. Let's bring it down just like another half or so. Let's see how much it changes. We bring the RPM back to 21 is what we initially chose on the chart. You can see, you can already see the vibrations. We actually have a lot of extra vibrations here. 2100. And the manifold pressure went up just a little bit. So I was inching, inching forward there to 2300. So that's how, you, that's how you choose and manipulate a power setting in the complex airplane. And now what you can really do is you can kind of choose what power setting you really like so we could stay here at 23, and we could go down to about 19 or 1800 RPM. And like 1900, it's a lot smoother. 18 and 1900 is really nice. And Scott Gentili from A2A, he actually owns a Comanche, 
and so this is this is pretty much modeled after his, and he, and he talks about how 1800 is a very smooth RPM for him, and a lot of people on the forums like to experiment with what power settings are best. Okay, so we've chosen about 19 here, it's a lot smoother. And then for leaning, we're just gonna, for, the, for today, we'll just find about 100 degrees rigid peak. So we're at about 10 gallons per hour, that's where the engine's running rough. And that should be this number one up here, which is 12.3. So that's close, but now we're going to enrich it again to bring it back to 100 degrees rigid peak. And it takes a little bit of time for the EGT to react, you got to give it a bit. And as you can see, you really got to make sure you got good view set up or find a way that you f fly the airplane and do your tuning at the same time. So we're trying to get that 100 degrees rich. And at 3,000 feet, we saw where peak was. It was right around the 1,400 mark. And I, I just went to full rich now. That's that's starting to move us down, but I was just shy of it. And when we had it just shy, that was probably, you know, without that extra enriching feature. So maybe just shy, just shy of it seems to work. Just shy of full rich. You can actually barely see it um, here. So just shy of full rich is working for 100 degrees rich of peak. And that's a nice safe margin. We don't want to be 50 degrees rich of peak. And 65% power, you could start going to peak EGT as well but I just chose 100 degrees rich for now. And so as a last feature, as a last thing, let's just show you some features real quick in this maintenance hangar. Because I wanted to show you how they got these question marks down here for all the different mods and attachments you can do. And you just click on the question mark and it tells you what you need to know about these different mods that you're going to do. Same with the tires, it's pretty cool. Battery. And he's even got soundproofing. He's got soundproofing in his real plane, and so he put that into the sim as well. You got the details of the airplane, the engine, how many hours on each. You click this icon, gets you into the engine. You can do a compression check by clicking this. Let's see if it does it right now. You got the rest of the engine parts here. They'll turn yellow if they're getting worn, red if they're broke. You can change the oil by clicking change, selecting your oil type, selecting if you want additive or not and click OK. And you can change the spark plugs between massive and fine wire. Fine wire is uh, more f uh, fouling resistant. You can, re and you can read about all this stuff in the, the manual that comes with the airplane, the model. Very good to read the manual. Click on complete overhaul, changes out your engine essentially, zero hours. Shift 3 menu, you click on reset, it's going to, it's going to reset both the airframe and the engine. And then if you click on used, it generates just a randomly used airplane, which is also a very cool feature. I've made I've made all the airplanes where the video is used, just to make sure you're seeing the base model of the sim. But when I'm flying just for fun, I like to fly with the used option and fix the, the completely broken things in the hangar and then just fly like that and see what happens. Alright, so that's it for your complex airplane checkout. Go watch the, the videos on the leaning to get a little more in-depth discussion on how to lean properly. And with that, I'll see you in the next video.